Okay, now with that as background, let's look then at the journal entries that was paused for this um, question. Now remember the purposes of the journal entries for the liquidation process is to record um, first of all the, G, the liquidator's actions in terms of the liquidation process, so the realisation of the assets, um, the settlement of all the creditors and then the calculation whether there's a deficit um, on liquidation that needs to be borne by the shareholders or whether there's a surplus that can be distributed to the shareholders. In the process we also close off all the general ledger accounts in um, the accounting records of the company being liquidated. So we start off um, this example by transferring um, any accounts that relate to cash within the um, accounting records to transfer that to the liquidator's cash account. The liquidator's cash account is where we record all the cash transactions relating to the liquidation process. So in this example, the company had a bank overdraft. Um, so we transfer it the bank overdraft, of course, would be a liability or asset with a negative balance. So we'll um, we'll transfer, we'll debit that bank overdraft account, and we um, credit the liquidator's cash, also indicating that um, the cash position of the company is weakened, um, and you know that more cash needs to be realized to cover um, the. The, the creditors that needs to be repaid. Okay, so the bank overdraft transferred to the liquidator's cash. That's the first entry in our liquidation um, process. Next we then close off the um, recorded values in the asset accounts. So we've had plant and machinery inventory accounts receivable and goodwill as assets. So we transfer and close off those asset accounts by um, crediting the asset and then um, transferring the balance to the liquidation account, the account where we record all the um, steps of the liquidation process. Okay, so it's going to be a debit to the liquidation account. And as we transfer the costs um, of the respective assets, we also need to transfer any related contra accounts, so the allowances that are made to those asset values, the provision for doubtful debts and accumulated depreciation. We also go ahead and raise any unrecorded um, liability, so this would be First of all, the remuneration and liquidation expenses that is due to the liquidator, which would not have been raised as a liability in the company's accounting records. So um, we create a creditor that needs to be paid, liquidation expenses payable in this case, and the entry that we use, or the account that we use to record this um, unrecorded liability is the liquidation account. This step can also include recording um, preference, divid um, preference share dividends that has been declared but has not yet been paid or where there's cum cumulative preference dividends but only if the constitution um, of the company allows for those shares to have a preferential right um, in t with regards to the ordinary shareholders in the event of a liquidation of the company. Because preference shareholders do not have a preferential claim um, per se when a company is liquidated. They have to get that right in the constitution. Preference shareholders only have a preferential um, right with regards to return on capital so when the company is in normal trading position, they have a preferential claim to the ordinary shareholders to get a return on their capital. But in the event of a company being liquidated, 
there's no preferential right given to the preference shareholders unless it's included or stipulated in the constitution of the company. Okay, the other entry that you might see at this stage relates to, so let me just write here, um, preference dividends, but only if the constitution allows. We can also see here that maybe there's um, interest on mortgages or um, other forms of financing that we still owe the, um, the creditor that maybe hasn't been raised in the accounting records, then we have to um, raise that unrecorded liability also in a similar way in this step. After we've recorded the um, any unrecorded liabilities, we then proceed to record the journal entries relating to secured creditors with a fixed charge. So those are the creditors that um, for we, which the company has provided a specific asset as security for the debt. Typically, it would be um, with mortgage hol um, holders on land and building and similar where a specific asset has been given as security. Now this can be treated in two ways. First of all, the liquidator can go ahead and realize that asset um, with any proceeds on the realization of the assets. He first of all have to settle what is due to the mortgage holder and if there's any excess cash available that is retained in the liquidator's cash account and used as to, to be distributed to the other creditors. Alternatively, the secured creditor can take possession of that asset. Um, he can then realize that asset at, um, in the best possible way to cover his debt that is owed to him, but then he has to um, transfer any excess cash that he gets from realizing that asset back to the liquidator. So he can't um, hold on to the profit on um, from realizing that asset. Any excess cash needs to be given to the liquidator to be distributed to other creditors um, who has claims against the company. Now you've, you see there the um, entry in the solution to um, to try um, to record the the realization of the land and buildings and the settlement of the mortgage. If it makes more sense, you can maybe also split out the um, this journal entry. So first of all, you record the transfer um, of the land and buildings to the liquidation account. So the um, carrying amount of the land and buildings. And then you'll record the proceeds from um, the realization of this asset net the amount that has been owed, so settling the mortgage holder's claim, including any um, bal interest balances owed to him. So you'll say, um, you'll debit the mortgage, the liability of 40000 under accrued expenses, there's an amount relating to interest that is still, um, that's also due to him. Credit our liquidation account to record the proceeds from this. So we managed to sell it for $100,000. And then this balance that's missing here, the 53920 it's the excess cash that is available um, to the liquidator for, to be distributed to the other creditors. And that, of course, will go to the liquidator's cash account. Okay, so if you... That, that is basically the, the 
um, steps in this um, entry. So if you just combine it into one entry, you'll get the result of um, the solution. Okay, but what we in effect are doing is settling the balances due to the mortgage holder, recording the process, transferring the carrying amount, and then calculating what the excess cash is from realizing the land and buildings. And we see it here in the liquidator's cash account. In the liquidation account, the only um, entry relating to this would be the loss that was recorded um, on the realization of the land and buildings. Okay, so if we've recorded the transfer of the carrying amounts of the assets to the liquidation account. We've raised the unrecorded liabilities. We've recorded the um, payment of the only secured creditor with a fixed charge. Now we can record the um, proceeds from realizing the other assets. Now you can do it on a line for line basis, but in this question they just gave us the total amount that was realized from selling off those assets. So we'll debit our liquidator's cash account. And if you remember the nature of the liquidation account, on the credit side we record the proceeds from realizing um, any assets that remained in the company. The next step is then to transfer any reserves um, in, that is still sitting in the company to the liquidation account. Um, reserves that still have a credit balance is transferred to the credit side of the liquidation account so it um, either increases the surplus that is distributed to the shareholders or it reduces the deficit that needs to be borne by the shareholders. The company also had accumulated losses so um, the losses are transferred to the liquidation account therefore um, having the result that the deficit borne by the shareholders is increased. With this entry, um, most of the equity would have been transferred to the liquidation account. The only balance still in equity would relate to the share capital, which is transferred to the shareholder's distribution, representing the investment of the shareholders, which they would like to recover. So in the shareholder's distribution, we'll see how much of that investment will actually be covered um, at the end of the liquidation process. So in this step, all reserve balances that were included um, or formed part of the equity um, would have been transferred and closed off to the liquidation account. We then continue to settle the creditors, um, creditors' claims to, towards the company. Now we've dealt with the secured creditor with a fixed charge. Um, one of the other creditors that is paid um, first as part of the liquidation process is the um, liquidator's claim. So the remuneration due to him and any liquidation expenses incurred by him will be settled before any other creditors are paid. Now we record the settlement of the claims by the creditors in the liquidator's cash account which is similar to just a normal bank account where we record payments on the credit side. So what have we um, paid and in what order are we going to pay it? Included in accrued expenses, we were told that um, there was an amount of $10,000 relating to wages and salaries. If a company have, has um, sufficient cash to to repay all the um, claims and the capital contributions, then your employees will be paid as um, part of the or 
unsecured creditors um, of the company, so the normal uh, trading creditors and and um, other creditors, um, they will be paid as part of that step. But if you maybe refer to page 1074 in the textbook, um, to the top section there where there's a point 1, 2 and 3, you'll see that it's stated there that um, if, the, if there are limited funds, so where there's a deficit that needs to be borne by the shareholders, there's not sufficient cash to pay all the, the claims um, as part of the liquidation process, then there are certain creditors that move up in ranking so that um, so they get a preferential right regarding the repayment of their claims. And one of these are your employees of the company. So the employees then move up to above the creditors with a floating charge, the secured creditors with a floating charge, so typically your debenture holders. So we'll see then that employees are paid before um, the secured creditors with the floating charge. But there are certain limitations on it. Um, with regards to your directors, there are limits on what will be repaid to them and any excess claim will be um, dealt with after the unsecured creditors or as part of the unsecured creditors. So refer to this section in the textbook and just make sure that you know of those limitations. Okay, so we pay off our um, employees before we pay off the debenture holders. There's sufficient cash to pay the debenture holders, which consists of the um, debt amount as well as part of the um, accrued expenses. There's also interest on debentures. So um, these two amounts relate to the same claim. Okay, only after that... Um, those preferential creditors have been paid, our ordinary creditors are paid. Now at this stage, what we see in the liquidation liquidator's cash account is the payment of the um, creditors, the recording of any proceeds from the realization of the assets, this of course or the um, assets of the company that is not given as security and the land and buildings related to the excess that we managed to realize on the selling of the land and buildings um, after we've repaid the mortgage holder. So at this stage we see that there's actually not sufficient cash to pay all the creditors. So how are we going to fund this shortage in cash? And at this stage, we have to look at the paid-up capital of the company. So we are told in the question that the paid-up capital consisted of 250,000 ordinary shares, of which 25 cents were uncalled. This means that we potentially could raise... Um, $62,500 from our ordinary shareholders. That is what's still uncalled um, and that that's the, um, the total that they can still be um, accounted for. However, we only need an amount of 39532 which we calculated in the liquidator's cash account. So we only need to make a call of 15.81 to 8 cents per share. So the 39,532 divided by 250. We won't make a call for the full amount because it basically just means that that excess cash will need to be repaid to, um, to them again. Okay, so we only make a call um, sufficient to cover the cash deficit in the liquidation process. So how do we record this transaction? We create a call on ordinary shares, which is um, almost like a receivable account. We um, record that call 
in our share capital account. So it um, increases our balance on the share capital. So at this stage, our share capital will consist of the 187,500, um, which was the paid up capital prior to the call, plus the 39,532. So that is now the value of our paid up capital. In the question, they told us that um, the liquidator um, made a call on shares and all call monies were received and distributed. So the next step is then to record the receipt of the um, call. And that basically then cancels out that receivable that we recorded um, when we made the call. Okay, so that call money is recorded in our liquidator's cash account and that is then sufficient to cover um, the balance of the, the claims against the company. The last step is then where we um, close off the paid up capital account so we would transfer the balance on the paid up capital which of course consisted of the um, 187,500, which was the paid up capital before the call was made, um, plus the call that we've just recorded. What was that amount? Of 39,532. Okay, so that's the paid up capital. And no distribution was made to the shareholders because there's a deficit that they had to, to bear. So the deficit is transferred from the liquidation account, effectively then closing off the liquidation account and all the um, other ledger accounts in the, the accounting records. So if you refer back to the liquidator's account... This is the deficit that was transferred to the shareholders' distribution account. The deficit that is the result of the liquidation process and reflecting the fact that no distribution will be made to the shareholders. So they basically lost um, their full investment in this company and they also had to make an additional um, contribution to cover the cash deficit of the 39,532. Uh, 39, so not a very good position for the shareholders to be in. Okay, so that covers the liquidation process, the um, typical entries. Um, my suggestion would be to, to map out the liquidation process for yourself, thinking of the steps, the closing off of the general ledger account, the recording of the realisation of the assets, the settlement of the claims, considering the position of the shareholders, whether any contribution needs to be made by them, and really using your ledger accounts, the three liquidation ledger accounts, the liquidation account, the liquidator's cash account, and the shareholder's distribution account to record those entries. Because from that, it's then easy to draw off the journal entries that need to be recorded.